Today marks the 12th day of Christmas. In John's Gospel, Jesus declares his purpose for the Incarnation. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I stand here on Epiphany Sunday prayerfully representing the work of justice for our neighbors. Our ministry welcomes immigrants, from those that have been in the shadows for decades to those recently released from Customs and Border Patrol processing centers. And we seek to restore the abundance eclipsed by their immigration status. No person is illegal. If such a thing were possible, then the person my tradition proclaims as Messiah would also have borne that label. The incarnation invalidates all criteria that peoples have used to discriminate. The Savior was born into the lowliest of circumstances. His skin was brown. He was carried to safety like so many of his brothers and sisters from places ravaged by abject poverty and political instability. He never knew affluence, and many believe that his education probably matched his station in life. Not only was he legal, he was the fulfillment of God's law, according to scripture. Today we find ourselves in a time when people have been dehumanized to a mere status by many. In the modern era, the Catholic social doctrine developed in response to the dehumanizing phenomena of the Industrial Revolution and that age-old dilemma of the one and the many. Beginning with the encyclical Rerum Novarum, first promulgated in 1891, the Church has taught the need to safeguard the dignity of the individual while also promoting the common good for all. Migration was a distressing phenomenon then as it is now. And then, as now, it was intertwined with economic and political realities that both facilitate exploitation and cause displacement. Today, the Catholic social tradition has matured to articulate fundamental principles that ought to guide the policies, the policy decisions that impact the most vulnerable. Those who have been forced by political and economic hardships to flee their homes. No one sets out on a caravan to a foreign land unless they must for the well-being of their loved ones. Scripture emphasizes this in the Epiphany story, observed this very day, which celebrates the arrival of foreign dignitaries to pay homage to the Christ child. It concludes with a pivot in the story and the flight of the Holy Family, escaping the tyranny of Herod, seeking safety and security in Egypt. According to Google Maps, that was about a 32-hour sojourn by foot. With a nursing baby, probably considerably more. Not 350 miles from where we gather right now, there are people who have walked for weeks and months, escaping tyranny and seeking safety and security for their families. Matthew 25 tells us that the living Christ is revealed in each of them, and we had better have eyes to see that real presence. Today we remind our lawmakers that migrants, then and now, have rights as individuals that need to be safeguarded for the sake of our collective dignity. We also believe that the common good is enhanced by the gifts of diverse culture and the strong values that they bring to our society. The social teaching of the church develops the following important principles that ought to inform society's approach to this perennial challenge. Persons have a right to find opportunity in their homelands. They shouldn't have to flee. Persons have the right to migrate to support themselves and their families. Borders shouldn't prevent them from providing for their loved ones. Sovereign nations have the right to control their borders, but that control must be done with justice and mercy and the utmost generosity. Refugees and asylum seekers should be afforded protection. And the human dignity and human rights of undocumented migrants should be respected and that they should be revered. As the pending legislative session gets underway, faithful citizens across this state and beyond 
implore elected representatives to keep these life-giving principles in the forefront of every debate that impacts the dignity of individuals and the common good of our society. We compel you to use scarce resources for the benefit of those most in need. And in the spirit of the newly canonized St. Oscar Romero, we command you, as elected officials, to halt any participation in political repression and vilification of those crossing our borders in fear, yet yearning to breathe free. If we faithfully craft legislation with a special concern for the least of these, the widow, the orphan, and the foreigners in our land, we will be participating in salvation history and ensuring that they might have life and have it more abundantly.